Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. We are in part two of the grunge chemise dress. Hopefully there's only two parts. <laughs> Can't promise that, but we're hoping. First we're gonna work on sleeves. We have a whole bunch of stuff to, to do before this dress is done. We have to do sleeves, we have to do a waistband, we have to sew the skirt on, we have to hem the gown, we have to figure out if we're gonna do ruffles, and then we have to figure out the sash situation. That's just for this dress. <laughs> There's also like the potential of a hat of some sort. I'm not sure what I'm doing there just yet, and that might be something completely separate, probably not in this video. But let's get this dress done. So the first thing I have to do is the sleeves. I have pinned them to get sewn, and I've already been told by my book that this is an entirely wrong thing to do. Um, so I guess I need to run some gathering stitches first, then sew the sleeves together. Yeah, that's right. And then put the cuff on. I do want that second bunching, like normally there's another like gathering in the middle there. And this says you can just run a gathering stitch in the middle and then tie something around it. I'm thinking I'm going to run a channel in there, but I think I weirdly have to have the rest of it made before I can figure out where that channel goes. Is that Does that sound right? Well, that's what's happening. So, <laughs> that is what my friends told me yesterday when I was talking to Kate and Pax and Jess, who are all 18th century related people. So, I'm going to trust them. So, that might be a hand stitch thing. I do know that I'm going to put the sleeves into the gown by hand because I think that's going to be a lot less stressful. The great thing about these sleeves I think is like you just attach it at one point sew the bottom in and then everything else just like it's poofy gathered and like whatever happens is cool. So at least that should go. Oh I just said that out loud. I just said that out loud. That was bad. I'm gonna knock on some wood and then we're gonna help. Okay so I'm gonna go start running gathering stitches and start sewing this sleeve together and hopefully this will go well. One thing that arrived here recently is this amazing embroidered fichu sewn for me by the amazing Christine of Sosteen. Here's the back. What a lovely fichu this is. I use fichu, but really what I actually in my heart believe is that this is sunscreen. <laughs> so um, I probably will want to wear a fichu with this, although normally it's a shame because like you want to show this, but like frequently this part is like tucked into the dress. So. I guess you can pop it out every now and then and show people or wear it on the outside when you feel like it. Anyway, this one is absolutely gorgeous. Like, look at that embroidery. If you guys have an embroidery machine at home, Christine does have this in her Etsy shop. I will link that down below for you guys. Um, the pattern to put in your embroidery machine, the file, I guess it's a file, <laughs> so that you can make this yourself if you'd like to. She did a beautiful job on this for me. And she even cut it out and hemmed it for me because she's amazing. Okay, little check-in. I've got my bands prepped. They have their ends tucked in and they have been had one. This is the outer seam is going to be uh, pre-pressed. I also have the sleeves here. They're sewn together. The gathering threads are all run both at the top and at the sleeve level. Sleeve. The whole thing's a sleeve. It's all at the sleeve level. At the cuff level. <laughs> And what I'm doing right now is tying off the gathering threads on the inside because I'm going to flip this inside out first uh, so that I can sew it down. I'm also going to press these seams open. And then essentially I'm going to take this guy, if this were right sides out, and shrink the sleeve all the way down to this level right here and then sew it onto it. I haven't figured out if I'm doing that by machine or by hand yet. I think hand actually might be easier and faster, but we'll see. Check in. We have them squished down into this cuff. The cuff will have its edges open so that I can put a drawstring through here if I want to, but don't have to, which I really like the option. So I'm using that. Um, this is all pinned in. I am going to hand just backstitch this around on the 5 8 mark line and then move along with my life. I don't really want to feed this onto my machine. The one thing about my um, Janome is that it doesn't have like a arm, so I can't put it on the arm and have it rotate around. You have to do it upside down, and well, I think that's perfectly fine for a like normal cuff. When it's pleated like this, it's like uh, I'm not good enough yet. I need to practice on something that isn't this, so I'm just gonna hand stitch it. 
Okay, we have two full sleeves with cuffs on. I do not have the channel for the second set of gathering, but I will do that later after I get to try these on. These are actually fairly well pattern matched here. So the seam is going right here. So I feel good about that. And they are ready to be placed on the dress tomorrow because this took lots of hours. Morning, I'm up morning. It's afternoon, obviously, um, but it is light out. <laughs> uh, I'm going to attach these sleeves to that bodice right now, and that's just a matter of hand stitching them on, so we're going to do that while we have a little chat with Morgan. Okay, two hours on the phone with Morgan and I got one sleeve set in, although I'm sure many of you can tell from watching that that like, take care, but I'm just talking a lot. <laughs> um, I am real proud. I don't know if you guys can see that, but like, that's a real good set in. Like that line is not wonky at all. And I'm, I'm kind of proud about how these went in. <laughs> they went in by hand and that's probably why they look as good as they do. Well, it looks as good as it does. Now, now that I've said that, I'm going to go do another one. <laughs> <laughs> which of course stresses me out. So I'm gonna go put that other sleeve on. So all I'm doing for this is I'm drawing the 5 8 inch line so I know where it is and then I'm basting the sleeve on just to make sure it looks okay. Try it on. I didn't even put on my stays. I just tried it on over my clothes and then yeah it was fine. So then I backstitched it in. So I still have to do interior like nice things <laughs> so that the the seam allowance is less and looks pretty and whatever but I will do that later now is not the time I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in okay I am very pleased to announce that we have two sleeves that only had to go in the one time each <laughs> which is great and very unusual I think part of the reason that is is this pattern has sleeves ooh this this pattern match that happened here by accident is awesome um <laughs> I think that's largely because these sleeves are symmetrical, meaning they're the same front and back, so there's no, like, it would be really hard to twist them <laughs> because, like, they're identical and then you just put the sleeve, the head, up here and it's so gathered at the top that, like, eh, if the sleeve head was off slightly, you, <laughs> you'd never know. So, um, but they're both in here really great. Um, the line up here is less awesome than it is on the other side, but it's good on this line. So... <laughs> Anyway, here is the sleeves from the back. They look good for now. I'm going to go ahead and move on to putting the waistband on and then attaching the skirt so that we have a full and complete situation. I don't know if I need to split in the skirt or not. I don't think I do, but I guess I'm about to find out. So I only had enough linen when I cut my top out to like cut out the top apparently. So I dug around in my giant basket of somewhat larger remnants and found this linen which is different than the linen that is inside of here so that is what this linen looks like it is fairly nice it's still not the finest linen this linen as you can see probably from this is a little bit more like textured it has more like slubby bits in it i think that's actually intentional but whatever it's a waistband who cares <laughs> So, it's going to be on the inside, and it's white, so it's getting cut. Okay, I just wanted to check that it does fit. It does, there's a little bit of extra in here, largely because I did not take the seam allowance out of the back of this. Although the back looks pretty good, so I'm actually not going to worry about that. Because I am running a channel through right around here where I can have a drawstring, which will help just tighten everything up right here, but honestly, like... It, it's gonna be fine. So I just wanted to make sure that it would fit. It totally does. Uh, my stays show a little bit, which annoys me at this point because they did not when I tried the thing on, uh, the sample on. So I think it might be a case of maybe I'll have to have a little pin here and there to help hold things 
exactly where I want them. Um, I also might put the ruffle on here, and then if I do, that'll completely egg that up. This feels like a cute, like, 90s crop top, though, currently, with these billowy sleeves. And we have a waistband on, which you sew, basically, uh, you based on the, the top one, and then you pin together all the layers and this guy the top hole bodice thing is sandwiched in there and then you bring them together because you're sewing them face to face and face to face on the other side and then you bring them together and you have a waistband so that's cool moving on hello i am freshly showered and wet still I am here today to attach the skirt, <laughs> which means we're getting close. Like, there is still hemming, there's ruffling if we're going to do that, and then there is the sass, sass, sass situation. How hard is that to say? Sass situation. Like, literally tried to say that ten times. Can't do it. Okay. <laughs> so, I am going to run gathering stitches around the skirt in, like, a quarter of the skirt sections so that I can gather it up without like worrying about breaking a thread because <laughs> like if it's a quarter of it it's fine and then I'm going to probably baste it by hand gather it up and then maybe run it through the machine and then I'm probably going to let it hang for a day or two while it does that I'm looking around because I forgot one thing ah and here's the one thing I got hoodie cord uh, I had to buy black and white because apparently it's really hard to just get white Okay, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to use this for the sleeves to do that second puff and maybe even tie off the first one. I have to shorten these and still keep the aglets on the end, so I think I'm going to, like, essentially cut out the middle and sew the thing together. It doesn't have to be super strong. Anyway, so that's a thing that has happened. I'm um, going to go ahead and run these gathering stitches and gather this up. I am leaving, weirdly, I've made the decision to leave one of the seams in the center front, which normally it would be in the center back where the closure is, but I'm leaving it in the center front. That way, in case I do need to cut this down like six inches so that I can squeeze my way into this dress, <laughs> I will have the room to cut that down. I don't know if I need to. I'm weirdly like tubular, so <sighs> frequently I don't need my waist opening to be as big as like normal people who, all people are normal. All people are normal. I am normal. People with an hourglass figure <laughs> need more room to like get in there because they have larger hips or they have like larger shoulders. I'm a tube. <laughs> I'm like a weird tube. So it might be possible for me to not have to split the skirt open, but I'm leaving myself the opportunity to do that by leaving that center front um, spot right there for it. Okay, here's the banananess of the situation. I have divided my top into four sections that are even, and I have, of course, up the bottom done in four sections that are even. So this is one section from the center back to the side, and I have to put all of this fabric into that. <laughs> so that's why we ran the gathering stitches, so I can squish this the heck down. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather. Okay, we're completely gathered in not splitting this front in down a little bit was a total mistake and I have to live with it because ugh, the anchor points for the basting stitches actually go over it and I mm, it's okay so now I'm gonna base and I'm gonna base at this lower line here so that I can pull this back a little bit and tear this down a little bit because that'll help me to do the actual sewing but I'm gonna hand baste all right everything is basted down and I have split this open 
and basted it to the sides. There are so many basting threads in here or like gathering threads and stuff to pull out. I haven't pulled out these pins yet. Hmm. I guess I can do that. So I'm going to pull out these pins and then I'm just going to go in this to the machine and then it will be attached and then we will have a fully formed dress. Like it still needs work, but it'll be there. And we have a dress with a waistband and a lot of basic threads and stuff to pull out. Um, I'm pretty stoked upon that. Uh, upon that? I'm pretty stoked about that and it, I think it looks really great. I'm into it. I can't wait to see it on my dress form. Um, they don't really talk about how to deal with like this and this is a fraying nightmare so I think what I'm going to do is cut this down to the same size as maybe maybe just cut this down just a little bit and then I'm going to try to zigzag this edge so that it doesn't fray all over the place constantly because that would make me crazy um, <laughs> and it's already starting to do it so I think I need to go through and, and at least Zig that, zigzag that. It's weird to zigzag something that's like bunched like this, but I really don't know what else to do about it. <laughs> so I think that's what's going to end up happening. So because I want this to be the feed dog side when I do this, I am actually going through from the top side and pinning this linen layer back so it does not get caught up in there because that's like the last thing I want. It's that that's not going to go over the, the feet dogs at all. This is going to be underneath the foot way over here. So, but I am taking the time to do that because I think that's going to save me a lot of headache later. It might be overkill. It's what I'm doing. Okay, here we have her. She has some stays on, so it's a little bit. Why are those on the ground? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> she has some stays on, so it doesn't fit the, quite the right way, but I am digging it. Obviously need to hem it, I'm trying to figure out what that would be. I'm going to let this hang like this overnight before I figure that out. So it's definitely going to be a tomorrow thing. Unfortunately, I'm going to remake this list with actual things that I need to remember to do. Like do that inside of the sleeves and stuff. So yeah, this looks is going to get longer again, sadly. Hello and welcome to a very strange angle and some like bizarre hair that I've got. I don't know. Anyway, I'm <laughs> I'm on the floor because it's time to cut the hen. And I am very excited about this. I have zero confidence <laughs> in myself with this. Also, I have zero Fs to give like about hems in general. Like I do not agonize over them about them being perfect. Uh, I looked at a bunch of pictures of people in these kinds of dresses and frequently you can see shoes all the way to this thing is inconveniently draping on the ground and is a massive like tripping and fire hazard. So <laughs> I feel like it doesn't really matter where I cut it. I'm looking at how long the back is currently and I'm thinking about how big a hem of them. I'm going to do a very small hem probably just like barely past rolled basically um, to get as much of this as I can out of it in the back. It is like I can stick a finger under this, but I also occasionally might wear this with like combat boots because you know, Grinch. <laughs> so I feel like I'm gonna try to make it about that all the way around. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the front than it has right now because this mannequin does not have the pooch that happens <laughs> when um i wear stays so like all of my chub gets shoved downwards and it makes a like weird little belly thing and so just like this rump here which is on the back of this dress which i find absolutely ridiculous like it has like a butt crack and everything like i think it's so funny <laughs> um <laughs> anyway <laughs> just like that um you know you kind of have to account for the uh bumps and rumps of your body shape bumps and rumps <laughs> of your body shape uh, so I'm gonna account for a little bit more of that so I might make the front like actually hit the ground right now so that when I hem it up it'll be slightly off the ground no matter what all of the shoes I'm gonna wear with it have at least a tiny heel on them so I'm gonna come up no matter what so I feel like hey I'm not gonna fuss over this too much it's not worth it so I'm gonna cut this now you can have a time lapse Okay, 
Now I'm gonna run it through the zigzagger and then hem it up so that that part is done. I am that person. I'm gonna go hand sew this hem in. Because I think it'll just disappear better. It will disappear even if I use the machine, but I think it'll disappear a little bit better. Do I want to do this? Not really. Am I going to do this? Yes. I also decided to just single flip it. Like, it's kind of a mess and to do it that way. But if I fill it down by hand, then I actually think it'll hold better, too. So, I'm going to go watch some TV or whatever and this for the rest of the night cool friends we have too many items like I came in here and I looked at this mess and I was like cool I'll put it away there's nowhere to put it away there's just nowhere like I have gotten to capacity so I have to do something about this I'm going to clean this up for the time being so that I can like get through the rest of this project but then there needs to be a reckoning of some sort and I don't know what that reckoning is, so I gotta figure that out. But I'm high key, like, kind of stressed about it because <laughs> I'm like, oh no, but I, I want all of these items. Do I? I guess I need to think about that. Okay, the hem is done. We are ready to go with that. I think I'm gonna work on the sash next because I think that is going to inform whether or not we want ruffles for sure. On this week's episode of Procrastination Nation, I decided that this is my sewing kit. It's a makeup bag that I got given free with purchase at like Laura Mercier or maybe Clinique. Who is this? Sonia Kashuk. Same, same. Anyway, I have removed these items from this. I love this little pin cushion, but I don't actually use it for this purpose very much. So I'm going to keep it on my table. The rest of the stuff is going to get distributed. This thimble is too small for me. These are kind of minky and worn out. Um, and I don't need to have a sharp thing in there. <laughs> I have an emergency one here, but I don't use either of these very much, so it's fine. So I've decided to keep these items in my bag. And then I wanted to put this new package of John James needles, which I got when I was out with Jen because she uses these and I would like to try them, but they wouldn't fit in the package. So I just cut the top off <laughs> and now they fit because there's no needles in that part. Actually, I could cut it off to like here, honestly, if I wanted to. Um, and I, I might need to actually although it's nice to have the like chart on the back that tells you what's what So I just chopped this down and I'm gonna stick it in there. I do I have a million of these bags? Yes. Could I make a bigger bag? Yes. Am I gonna do that? Probably not. Also, I just used this and it was amazing I also realized I've been carrying around this thing which is a magnet thing which is awesome and this which is not awesome uh, these needles probably actually suck. I don't even know. I use them anyway. I'm never, I've never used this needle threader and I don't want another hard package in there. So cool. I put all the extra needles that I had from that book here. Yeah. Cool. Now I have less stuff. Let's see if it fits. Yep. We're all good. I separated it into stuff I use less often and stuff I use more often and divided by the, this needle book. <laughs> so should be all good now. Yes, I do have five pairs of tiny scissors in here, which is completely unnecessary, especially since I don't really love these. But they get lost if I put them in the scissor compartment over there. I guess I could... Uh, all these side pocket things are actually pretty used up, so... <sighs> Always with the space issues. Okay, here is what's going to happen for the sash situation, which is very difficult to say. This linen that I have here is white. It is not the same optic white as in this dress, unfortunately. Uh, I don't care. That's what's happening. <laughs> they wouldn't care. I don't care. I can make it yellow. I can make it green. I might dye it. I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, uh, so it is 59 inches long, which is great. It means I need two pieces and I need to sew them together. However, I am going to start my sash in the front, in the center, wrap it wrap back around behind me, and then bring it forward again and tie it off like a hoodie would be so I'm gonna put cuffs on this so I need to make these tubes <laughs> so I did a bunch of measuring and uh, four inches is just actually rid ridiculous like it is just way too wide I looked at it on my body and I was like no no that's too wide and then I went to three and I was like that is much better so I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna make a, a seven inch yep seven inches so that I can fold it in half and then have a half inch seam allowance. Uh, maybe I should do six and a half and then just use a quarter inch seam allowance. Does that sound good? Yeah, that's probably a better idea. Okay, 
So I'm going to do that. <laughs> but first I'm going to draw some, I'm going to iron this and then I'm going to draw some thread so I get straight lines because that makes me feel good about it. And then because I don't want that seam right in the middle, what I'm actually going to do is take one strip and then take the other strip and cut it in half and seam those together so that the, the part at which it there is a seam is like somewhere on my mid back area as it comes back around. So I think that's the way to go. Will that work out? 59? No, that'll go around me and then come back. It'll be in the front. It'd probably be in the knot somewhere, which is fine, which is fine. So this also might get shorter depending on how the tie off works, but I want to make sure I have plenty. So this is my plan. This is what I'm going to execute. Okay, it's not flipped inside out yet, so it's gonna be slightly smaller than this. Is that right? No, I folded it down. Okay, good. So it'll be a little bit more tidy than that, but that's a uh, vaguely what it will be and the length it'll be. So now I gotta go watch a video on how to put on cuffs <laughs> and put some cuffs on this. I actually like the length of where they dangle, so I think I'm gonna leave it. I don't mind the different white on it. That doesn't bother me, so. I think this will help me figure out if I want to have ruffles or not though, so that's good. Okay, this tube is still inside out, but I do have a cuff done. So that's what it looks like. I just I made a cuff and attached it and then stitched up the sides of the cuff and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. It's just literally a folded piece of cloth that has all the edges turned in. I double stitched it around this and then I sewed up the sides. I did also sew under the edge of the shirt and just uh, running stitch to that down. So once it gets flipped inside out, this will be the outside of it. Okay, I'm halfway done ironing out the flip. So the flip looks great on this side. Here is the outside of the cuff. Looking good. I'm enjoying this. I think it's going to be cute. Uh, this side is a hot mess because <laughs> I did the flip, so I need to, I'm sticking essentially a ruler in there and then using that to level out the edge, pinning it and just ironing it. So at that point, I will be done. I haven't decided if I'm going to put like buttons on this or button, just do buttonholes like there should be cuffs or what, but I'll figure that out later. This is not necessary to figure out ruffles, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, we're coming right along. I like the way they look. They're maybe a tad bit longer than I originally thought they would be. I wonder if that's the knot. Could also be where the knot's sitting. Yeah, I don't mind. So that's where we are. Let's go look at the list. Okay, we got the sash done. So we got to talk about the ruffles next. So let's do that. Okay, so we saw before with no ruffle, right? Here's one with a ruffle and this is what it looks like from far away. And then it's between, do I want a fringed out ruffle? So we all know how much I love fringing stuff. Or this would be hemmed. So just a hemmed ruffle. I think I'm going to sleep on this and send questions out for people to answer. See what their opinions are. Okay, I have taken a poll. I have consulted with my consultation expert, Morgan. Um, and... Uh, we've decided that we like the fringed one so that's good and I'm gonna attach it with safety pins we tried a million different variations of different ways to show this ruffle sometimes the safety pins went this way which sort of made it disappear we had less ruffle we had more ruffle we have fluffed ruffle so I, we like this one the best so I need to go get more safety pins I'm also contemplating patches so I have that Nirvana one. 
Um, I have Soundgarden, I Pearl Jam, and I have Alice in Chains. But eh, maybe on the hat some, maybe just that one on there. I'm not sure. Also, I hate myself right now <laughs> because I spent a lot of time making those cups and putting them on. But I think these need to be shorter. They need to be like there, I think. Well, the edge of the cuff needs to be there so that it would actually be like there. So this means I need to go to Joanne and get some larger safety pins because I have a box full of safety pins here, but there's not enough larger ones to go all the way around. And I have to hope that I have enough fabric to make enough ruffle for this whole thing. I also decided I better check that I have enough material to even do this. I have just enough material <laughs> to do this. So I think that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so I am back from Joanne and I have a whole box of safety pins to get this thing on here. I'm going to cut, ruffle, and then fray out three sections of this. And I think when I apply them to the dress, I'm actually going to hem the edges and then leave them separate from each other. So if one of them like gets pulled off or something, it doesn't rip the whole thing off. <laughs> Uh, and if one of them got pulled off, that would probably be tragic for this whole dress since it's all made out of gauze. <laughs> but um, the great thing about having it safety pinned on is that I now have the option to also not have a ruffle at all, like at any point I want. So that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and handle this situation and get this all donezo. And we have a ruffle! Let's get ready to ruffle! Okay, uh, I like it. It's a floofy ruffle. I'm into it. It does go all the way around. There's like a seam thing, but it's not a seam, it's just I left, like these are three separate pieces and that's fine. <laughs> so they are on there, I feel good about them. I also stealthily tried this on and I found out that this is the spot and it can actually stay on this straight line, sort of, and it'll be fine. So I can put a tube on the inside to run a cord through and then put some eyelets in um, and have them come out exactly where this comes out which is in the back so i think that's really weird like i wish this cuff thing was actually in the front mm, i wonder if that's just i was dumb and put it there and i really should have put it like on the side do i have to redo these i'm not redoing these cuffs okay anyway <laughs> i'm gonna put the cuff thing on the back and then i'm gonna put a, a, the eyelets coming out the side of here so that way it floofs up um because it'll have it a place where it can hold onto my arm essentially and make two floofs so i'm gonna run a channel through both of those on both sides because these sleeves are exactly the same they are cut in the same pattern so i can actually do this line right here also all right so we're hitting up closures next we're gonna do some closures and then we'll do these channels and then we will be donezo and in a surprise to absolutely zero people I actually sewed one of the tapes onto the arm to accept the drawstring, and I put in some eyelets. I'll show you those in just a second. And these are not the best workmanship ever, but uh, they're in, so there's that. So now I just need to match the location of these items and put them, put it in on the other side. So I'm gonna sit down and do that. Okay, both of the arm bands. Well, I, I don't know the channels are done, and I have put the hoodie cables in them. Also, the hoodie cables have been shortened um, by sewing together, like, I basically cut out the middle of, of the cord and just sewed it together so that um, it would still have these aglets on the ends to the bottom of the wrist. Okay, the only thing I really have to do to get this thing, like, ready to, to roll here is the closures. I have so many things that I need to finish the insides of the sleeves. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I might just skip it. <laughs> we'll see. It's actually pretty clean in there, so I'm not really that worried about it. Little detour. I was on Instagram the other day, and I was looking at my friends got these irons. They're called Aliso irons, and they lift themselves up when you let go of them so that you don't ever have to, like, tip it. You don't have to keep tipping it back and forth, which is great for quilters and apparently they haven't figured out that quilters and customers have so much in common. <laughs> anyway, I was talking about them on my stories asking if anybody had ever seen them before, had used them, what their thoughts were, and people had pretty good impressions of them. So um, anyway, I was just asking that and then the brand contacted me and they sent me 
uh, an iron so far and I supposedly I'm getting another one. I'll show you what I got. So I got this, uh, this is a mini iron and I was really enamored with this orchid color because, you know, I keep getting purple things. Hannah loves to mock me about this purple thing, which I'm like, I don't just love purple and apparently I do just love purple. Specifically like orchid. <laughs> so they sent me this mini iron, which I will unbox for you in just a moment. Um, I'm super hype on it and I think it's super cool. They're also gonna send me one of their bigger irons in a couple weeks because they're coming into the warehouse that has one of that like lift technology that we just discussed. So I'm I'm super excited about that too. Okay, I did already like pop this tab because I wanted to be able to get in here easier. So I have figured out how to be an Instagrammer <laughs> and a YouTuber. So you get your little registration card. Um, and then there's an iron in here, a little tiny iron. Ooh, it's super cute. And I saw this on Vivian's uh, Instagram just the other day, which I, she also got them at the same time, apparently. We were talking to them at the same time. This is a hanger, like, you can hang this on the wall like this, and then you can take it off and flip it over and use it as, like, your resting mat to go ahead and, and use it on your ironing board or wool mat or whatever you use. Alright, I also got this box from Janome, which I'm very excited about. And I think I know it's in here, but we'll see. box inside of a box. Okay. Yep, there's a bunch of feet in here, which I'm very excited about. They were asking me about which feet I wanted the other day. So I got a piping foot from my M7 and a gathering foot, which is very exciting because, of course, customers do a lot of gathering, and a sliding guide foot, which looks really interesting. So it's a foot you can put on to your machine and it'll show you exactly like how far out it is and it has like a guide on it so if you want to be really particular about no I really really want this to be exactly a quarter inch or whatever you can use this for that. Alright we're coming in on the home stretch here and I'm gonna put in a little bit of hooks and eyes right here just like four of them every you know a couple inches or so just to get this um, front part that goes down into the skirt uh, closed up well because this is on the center front and I'm gonna be wearing a petticoat so it's not that big of a deal but I do want it to be able to close um, and then I'm thinking about hook and eye tape for the front but I think I need to try it on and find out like it is ever so slightly too large I think so I have to see if there's a way for me to make it so I can attach it together tightly okay we have four hooks and eyes in the like weird little skirt section and then six more that have been put up here. I decided to go ahead and mark improperly. You can see wrong, the wrong spots. Yeah, mm -hmm. those were done with a sharpie because I have a sharpie that looks like this, which is like a fine point and it was sitting right next to my Frixion pens. <sighs> cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's not a big deal because it's on the inside. So I, I have put the six hooks on. I will try the dress on tomorrow because it is like 3.30 in the morning and so I can't get my husband to put my corset nope stays on me so that I can try this on and figure out how much it should close. <sighs> okay, so I will do this tomorrow and then we will be a dunzo and I will be so excited and I will get this video out to you after three more weeks. Cool. Obligatory try on selfie situation to see how it looks. And I like it. I'm just measuring where the bars have to go for the hooks and bars. But I'm feeling it's pretty good. I feel better about like how long this is at this point. So I'm going to do the bars and then we'll be done. It's a little, it shows my stays a little bit. So I'll just have to pin it a little bit when I wear it. But I am okay with that. Cool beans. And we have hooks and eyes or bars all set in and ready to go so tomorrow i will put this on and you know wear all the underpinnings and do the things to show you this thing so we can have a final reveal i'm not wearing pants so it is a dark and stormy day outside i don't know if it's gonna come across on camera it looks a lot lighter out there than it actually is it's very dark and gray but <laughs> i'm gonna go outside and take some pictures for you anyway 
Uh, we definitely have a problem because the grass is super wet because it was raining all night. So I'm gonna run out there while I can and show you this dress. Unfortunately, it probably means you guys have to like wait for like the full do. Like I want to do black eyeliner. I want to do the whole nine when I wear this thing. But it seems like today is not the day for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this dress on and go outside so I can show it to you and we can finish up this video. Um, and then you'll see this soon. Don't worry. I got big plans for this dress. It's it's going somewhere good and there's gonna be great photos. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I filmed a very short clip for you just now, the one that you just saw, and then it started raining. <laughs> so cool. We got at least some visual in this dress. I also took some pictures uh, of me in the dress with my hat that my friend loaned me, so I'm going to insert them here for you so that you can see what's happening with that. So I do have a little announcement or an unexpected thing that I'm going to tell you about, which is... I got invited to a, a little soiree <laughs> and so I now have need of making this dress exactly the same but in black right now and also maybe some stays and doing that in like a month so I don't know how that will happen because I'm supposed to go to Disneyland like next week and I have my holiday party this weekend which we are holding outdoors um and making everybody test before they come over be safe kids um, so I am, I have been in a panic for the last several weeks, which is why this video took so long, was because I've been just, like, sewing when I can in between, like, organizing all these other things and, like, cleaning my house and, like, getting stuff ready and, like, why is all of my garland with lights in it dead? <laughs> like, all of it died. It's actually, it died because I left it up from, like, December of last year until June of this year and it was running all the time. And <laughs> I don't think garland is, like particularly rated for that. It's also like 10 years old, so I had to go make a new garland. In fact, I still have to go get one more string, so a little uh, things in my house are crazy. Anyway, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that, but I have the stuff, so I'm gonna try. So that's what's gonna happen is I'm like gonna go to Disneyland next week, and then I'm gonna immediately dive into trying to get uh, another dress done, and maybe making those front lacing stays. My stays are too high in the front. That is what I've decided. They are just like far too high because they pop out of every dress and I'm just like I mean my boobs are not huge like they are I like them they are the perfect size for me I enjoy my boobs but <laughs> things that will get made into a cl clip later and put on the internet anyway <laughs> they are not huge and so they do not like fill things out and come spilling out the way they should anyway for the silhouette when I say should I mean for the silhouette they they do what they want to do and I am happy to have them do what they want to do anyway uh, but I need, I need, and it's really weird because my bust point is like way higher than my dress form it's bust point, so I don't think I have a low bust point or anything, and they're not particularly droopy because they're not particularly huge, so I don't know what's going on, but they will not fluff, <laughs> there's not enough there to fluff, so I want different stays. I don't know how I'm going to do this, given me, given how slow you guys know I am, but I guess I'm going to cram. I don't love cramming, but this might be worth it, so we'll see. Okay, that was a lot of, like, mystery thing. It's an event. It's a small event, it's a private event, it's a birthday party, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm done. I'm excited about this. I'm going to move Finish Inside of Sleeves into my list of things that are Finish Inside of Sleeves that I was supposed to do in December. Is that gonna happen? Not, probably. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go deal with my chaos life leave you with this. Leave me notes and comments about what you're working on, what you're listening to, what you're watching. I am currently listening to the podcast Lore, which is great. It's a bunch of ghost stories though, so like, or alien stories, or insane asylum stories, or you know, it's lore. So I'm, I'm learning about that and it's fun while I wrap Christmas presents, which I need to go do right now. Okay, I love you guys. See you later. Bye.